Okay, uh, previous talks from the two groups of CUHK and MSRA. You may wonder, so if, what if these people work together? So uh, to demonstrate their um, in reinforced researchability, I give you the third talk regarding a new way of data preparation. For in semantic segmentation, Amjaya Jia's work was collaborated with Dilin, uh, Ji Feng Dai, uh, Kai Minghe, and uh, Sun Jian. And my student, uh, Dilin, got a visa problem and can't be here, so I'll give a talk instead. So the problem of semantic segmentation is to define as labeling each pixel category, such as cat, person, and so on. It's almost standard now that semantic segmentation benefits from end-to-end uh, -end training of neural networks, images, and uh, their full labels are used. So high accuracy of segmentation requires training on a lot of images and their pixel-wise labels, which causes a huge burden on data preparation. So look at this example. Even with easy line drawing roughly along object boundaries, it takes minutes for annotator to get label one image. This time-consuming process makes generating a large amount of label data very costly. For another method, Scribble is used for annotation generation. Drawing curves inside and outside the objects are easier to achieve. However, the generated mask may not be perfect in the first place. So several parts of touch-up may be needed in order to produce a costly reasonable mask, like this one. In most previous work, the generated complete mask of a touch-up are fed into the network for training. Different from this line of research, we directly use the sparse scribble without any further touch-up for training in the segmentation network. So no mask is used in this process. So our method belongs to weakly supervised semantic segmentation. There are few groups of related methods. In the first setting, image level labels are used for supervision. Since there is no clear object or context indication, naturally, segmentation result may not be very accurate. The second line, a weakly supervised semantic segmentation is to use box-level annotation. Because in this setting, object bounding boxes are provided. The results are with better quality in general. So our method belongs to setting 3, where scribble annotation is used. In each of these examples, three curves are drawn to indicate two objects and a background. We choose scribble because they show more location information of objects compared to image level category uh, labels and annotation. Scribble also provides an interactive and flexible way to label regions with complicated shape, such as sky and grass, highlighted in these two examples. We now introduce our framework. So this is an overview. So our framework consists of two components. They are fully connect convolutional network and a graphical model. Between these two modules, the fully convolutional network provides semantic prediction. Our graphic model propagates labels from scribble annotation. The propagate labels are used for supervised learning of fully convolutional network. The two components are connected by network prediction and the label propagation. They iterate to improve the result quality. Our fully convolutional network simply follow conventional successful forward propagation procedure to produce the network prediction. Since its construction is not our main contribution, we refer the audience to our paper for more details about structure. And the module takes input images and output pixel-wise labeling. And then with the pixel level prediction, we update the graphic model, which build on super pixels of the training image. Each vertex in the graph represents a super pixel. We design scribble-based unary potential to impose constraints from user annotation. The network unary potential respects prediction from the fully convolutional network module. It models semantic content to help label propagation. The adjacent super pixels in the graph are connected by pairwise potential to model appearance similarity. In what follows, I briefly explain these three potentials. The first one is scribble-based unary potential. In this example, when the super pixel overlaps with scribble, it gets zero cost when assigning the label of scribble to this super pixel. So this is straightforward, such as this label bottle. The meanwhile, assigning other labels to this super pixel becomes impossible because we impose very large penalty. In the second case, when the super pixel is not interacted with any scribble, 
there's no any preference of assigning labels. We just use the equal cost of all labels given by the scribbles. And the last cost setting makes assigning other labels of ascent from scribble impossible. If a single pixel intersects with multiple scribbles, we simply take it as this case. Our second potential is the defined on network prediction. Given a single pixel, we compute the cost of assigning a label based on network prediction results. This is an example of the network output probabilities of assigning a label model to the given single pixel. The final unary potential is the sum of pixel-wise local probabilities of all pixels in that region. Another example is for labeling person. The potential is computed in the same way. The last potential is a pairwise one to help label propagation. And this term is represented as edge in the graphic model. It denotes the appearance similarity between two adjacent serial pixels. We combine the difference of color histograms and the texture histograms to measure the appearance similarity. To perform semantic segmentation, we need to determine the parameters of the fully convolutional network by learning. It's a two-step iterative process. In the first step, we use current network parameters to obtain a segmentation prediction of the training image. Then we apply graph cards to solve for the labels of all super pixels. Then given the super pixel determined, we follow the conventional back projection, back propagation algorithm to optimize the network. The propagated labels are used as supervision in this step. As described before, these two modules iterate, and the network in the final iteration is used for segmentation during testing. We should update of the propagated labels during iterative optimization. In the first iteration, because network prediction results are not available, propagation of labels only depends on the scribble-based unary potential and the pairwise potential. With the update of the network, more semantic information from the network becomes available. The propagated labels are more accurate in the second iteration. In the third iteration, the labels are most reasonable already. To evaluate our method, we collect cerebral annotation data on the Pascal dataset. Our annotation procedure follows two protocols. In the first protocol, we annotate the Pascal VOC 2012 dataset. It takes the annotator on average 25 seconds to label image with 20 object categories. In the second protocol, we annotated the Pascal context and the VOC 2007 dataset. It takes about 50 seconds to label image with 59 objects and staff categories. We compare our, uh, we show our result and do some comparisons here. First, we compare with other weakly supervised methods using different ways of annotation. Image level annotation methods are the most economical one in terms of the data collection for training. Without any image touch up for location information, the accuracy is not very high. This shows, shows the result of both supervised methods our performance is even better. So these are two segmentation examples and our scribble supervised result during testing. We compare our weekly supervised and strongly supervised result based on masks. When using all pixel level masks in supervision, the segmentation accuracy is about five point higher compared to weekly supervised results. Our result can also be easily generalized to semi-supervised learning that use both pixel level masks and scribble data. We use the scribbles on the VOC 2007 dataset as extra data. Our semi-supervised method yields better results than the strongly supervised one, which manifests the potential of using inexpensive scribble to expand the training data size. This is a simple overview of the semi-supervised framework. During training, masks are not changed. Scribble data and the network parameters are, however, updated in our iterative optimization. So this is a very simple framework. These are two segmentation examples with results of a strongly supervised system and a semi-supervised system. Segmentation errors are reduced with our extra scribble data for semi-supervised learning. So that manifests the usefulness of the scribbles. We perform more experiments on the Pascal context dataset. This is a recent box supervised method that uses extra box annotation the size of extra data is about 10 times of ours. Our semi-supervised uh, semi result is kind of surprising. It may be because 
Scribbles are more flexible than boxes in describing complicated shapes of stuff and context. We have several take-home messages for you. First, weekly supervised method could be important, given the inconvenience and the convenience to generate different level of data. Our system is not sophisticated. What I want to show you is about the high potential of this line of research, especially in this data demanding era. Our semi-supervised experiments manifest that extra scribble annotation is indeed helpful. Finally, our scribble data is already online, so we believe that there is still much room to utilize it in future. For possible follow-up work, we note our method deal with seal pixels, so low quality seal pixel may be adverse to our final result, so addressing this problem could be impactful. Besides, semantic segmentation method published this year has already employed a more powerful segmentation network, so updating our network accordingly may further improve the performance of semi-supervised learning. So that's all of my talk. Thank you.